I remember doing my first gig uh, aged 14 at the local school, like a kind of a youth project organized afterwards for musicians. And I was very excited, you know, I, I imagined there be, to be a crowd of, you know, um, groupies and, and stuff and like, like, like gigs that I've seen on TV, you know. It wasn't quite like that, but it was like, you know, and, and the gig didn't, maybe didn't quite go as smoothly as we would have liked it to, but it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a good start, you know, you've got to start somewhere. I took lessons for nine years of a really good teacher called Vernon Stoko. And um, yeah, I didn't have any say in what, what I learned. You know, there was a syllabus. I was, he gave me pieces to learn, like classical pieces. And, uh, I, and there were one or two occasions where I've had some serious problems with a piece and we might have left it. But usually, you know, I just said, fair enough, okay, I'll give it a go. And it's good to learn all this different stuff, you know, because each piece has its own... Um, you know, pitfalls and you learn something new off each one, a new kind of harmony or a new technique or something. It gives you each different, I used to think you're giving me each different one for a reason, you know, because he thinks that, he, th he thinks that I'm ready for this one or he thinks that I've got something to learn from it. Whereas a lot of people that I've taught, they'll just like, oh no, I don't want to learn that, I just want to learn this, you know, and I don't, I, I don't want to learn how to play scales, but I just want to learn how to play nice chords. <laughs> But, you know, if you if you were prepared to invest a little bit of time learning how to play scales, then you'd know how to make your own uh, nice chords. Well, I've always liked Bossa Nova ever since the, when I first heard The Girl from Ipanema. And I, so I learned how to play that. And I wanted to learn how to sing it in Portuguese as well, because it's a really nice language to sing it in. A lot of the Bossa Nova songs are written about very simple, um, just, you know, like love songs, you know, um, in various like, I love you, you are beautiful. Uh, you're a beautiful thing, and um, and that's that's all good, you know, because it's it's very fundamental and stuff. But I don't know. I'm not sure if we can get away with writing songs like that uh, these days because irony plays such a big part in uh, all music these days, or, or most like successful um, or fashionable music. That it's it, it, to be to be so uh, sincere and to, to lay your emotions bare like that in music. I think is is kind of considered more in bad taste nowadays than. Perhaps it was in the 50s and 60s. Suppose uh, probably one of the musicians who I admire the most is, of course, Joao Gilberto, who's the the father of Bossa Nova. Uh, along with Tom Jobim, who wrote a lot of the songs, Joao Gilberto was the main performer. Uh, he, he, he sang and played the guitar, a nylon string classical guitar like this one. Uh, and he just developed his own technique, which is just a little bit different. Uh, uh, well, it was, it was de de derived from earlier forms of music, and he brought the uh, a few different styles together in this uh, in this nice style of playing on the guitar. But before performances, I, I would say that I get more excited than nervous um, these days. I mean. It, I hear people say that, I mean, I guess I've always done this anyway, but I hear people say nowadays in like, you know, sort of like self-help <laughs> advice and stuff that you should try to always try to uh, convert that energy, the negative energy into positive energy. So if you're feeling nervous or worried, then try to convert that energy into excitement and uh, you, you, you can channel all of that energy uh, in a good way. And it's a great way to explore London as well, to go out there and perform because you get to meet uh, all kinds of uh, interesting people. And it's good to see, it's good to meet people who appreciate the music as well, because, you know, for many years, like I said, I didn't know many people who liked Bossa Nova, and I thought, well, you know, it's, maybe it's not worth playing it, but the more I play it out in public, the more people I meet who like it, you know, and, I, and the more the more I become convinced that I am doing the right thing. Well, I hope to establish myself as London's number one Bossa Nova artist, uh, just so that everybody knows who to go to for, for that kind of thing, because as far as I know, I mean, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, there's nobody else who's doing it as well as I am with a, with such an extensive repertoire and playing the music in such an authentic way. So when I'm playing in public, I tend to meet a lot of Brazilian people. Uh, I mean, there's quite quite a big percentage of them of the people that will approach me and um, to talk about the music. Uh, there's but also a lot of uh, just uh, uh, a lot of people from all over the world. It's amazing how many people like Bossa Nova. Certainly, a lot of really young people, as in toddlers and uh, you know small kids, 
uh, seem to uh, they seem to enjoy it because it offers uh, like dancing opportunities. So. I've always told myself that I would never get up, give up, uh, and I don't think I, I don't think I ever could give up because it is music. Of all of the many interests that I have, music is the one thing that I, I've always came back to, and I think I always will. <laughs> Ba 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 